In the far northwestern corner of Nevada lies one of the flattest places on Earth, the Black Rock Desert. Native Americans like the Paiute lived here for thousands of years. In the 1800s, tens of thousands of immigrants moved westward, making the treacherous journey through the Black Rock Desert and High Rock Canyon. In modern times, the Black Rock Desert has become home to the infamous Burning Man Festival. But that's not what we're here for. Come along with the OTG crew as we explore the Black Rock Playa. Bumpy tracks, old homesteads, High Rock Canyon, hot springs, and some of the darkest skies in the lower 48. This is the Black Rock Adventure Route. What's up, guys? You've got Ben here from the Overland Trail Guides crew. Super excited to be talking to you about another over Overland adventure, the Black Rock Desert Adventure Route. A little bit about OTG, we feature over 60 curated overland tracks with the most de detailed information that you're going to get on the internet at overlandtrailguides.com. Before we get into all that route information, make sure you hit that subscribe button down below and if you like what you see, be sure to leave a comment. So let's go check out all of that information and then we'll get into our adventure. The Black Rock Desert Adventure Route is located in northern Nevada about an hour and 45 minutes north of Reno. The track is 231 miles long, and in a 4x4, it should take you about 4 to 6 days to complete. As far as the recommended vehicles go, we recommend a stock 4x4, and for those of you on adventure bikes, we, rec we recommend a mid-sized bike for this adventure. It rates as a mild blue, or a 4 out of 10, on Onyx's technical rating scale. You can get all of this information, and more, including the GPX files and a detailed route guide at our website at www.overlandtrailguides.com. But let's get into our adventure now. After making the six hour trek from the Bay Area to the Black Rock Desert, we met the group at Trago Hot Springs. We soaked in the warm springs while watching an awe-inspiring lightning storm in the distance that seemed to go on for hours. The next morning, we'd head back into Gerlach to meet a couple more folks before heading off on our adventure. All right, guys, we are at the Friends of the Black Rock, High Rock Desert out here. Uh, they just opened up. We got a bunch of really cool maps. Everybody else is at Trago Hot Springs. We're gonna go check out the little visitor center here in Gerlach, and then we're gonna shoot across the playa, meet up with the group. Should be a good one. Uh, we're gonna be heading north across the playa. Some of the things we're gonna be checking out along the way, we'll show you a little bit more of Trago Hot Springs. Uh, we'll be going to uh, Black Rock Point. Some really cool micro playas going up atop the uh, a really great viewpoint and then over to maybe we'll see if we get there to the uh, Lassen Clapper murder site. So let's go. If you're a history buff, you'll definitely want to check out the visitor center. Here, you can learn about the Native Americans that called this land their home along with the tens of thousands of immigrants who passed through the Black Rock Desert along the Lassen, Applegate, and Noble Immigrant Trails. What do you think, man? <laughs> After resupplying in Gerlach, we literally made a beeline across the playa to Trago Hot Springs to meet back up with the group. We cut down on our drive by a solid 20 minutes with this nice little shortcut. All right, guys, we are out here at Trago Hot Springs. This is where we camped last night. This is where we rendezvoused again today after we met Emilio and Bobby. Got Thomas calling me over there. Um, two people have gotten flats on Jungo Road. Ron got one last night in his Jeep. Um, and then Emilio and Bobby just got one right now. So just something to keep in mind when you're going out on Jungo Road. Um, there is a lot of obsidian and really sharp rocks uh, that just can get through your tread pretty easily. In the first order of the day, we would introduce the group to the infamous Black Rock Playa.
Covering 200 square miles, the Black Rock Playa is one of the flattest surfaces on Earth. At five times the size of the Bonneville Salt Flats, it is the largest salt flat in North America. 15,000 years ago, a massive lake covered much of northwestern Nevada, but today, all that remains is the Black Rock Playa. The Black Rock Desert got its name from the thousands of immigrant travelers who used the mass of Black Rock as a reference point. If you pay close attention, you'll likely come across one of the T-shaped markers denoting the immigrant trails that pass through these parts, like the Applegate Trail. Downslope of Black Rock Point sits the Black Rock Hot Springs. While beautiful, these hot springs are scolding hot, not safe for soaking. So we are at Black Rock Hot Springs, and I'm wondering if this is a... Uh... I can't tell what the heck this is. I was thinking maybe it was a, a wagon, but it does not appear to be so. Or it could be. It could be. Yeah, look at that. After our brief stop at the hot springs, it was time to head through the micro playas and up the mountain to what just might be the best viewpoint in all of the Black Rock Desert. The track gets rather bumpy and steep in a few sections, so a 4x4 with 4 low is definitely recommended if you want to make it to the viewpoint. Okay guys, we broke for lunch at the Black Rock Viewpoint. Call it Playa View, whatever you want. Black Rock is right down there, along with the uh, Black Rock Springs. And we can see, you're not gonna be able to see it, but way out there, way out there in the middle, that's where they're actually setting up Burning Man, because we're out here in mid-August. Uh, Burning Man will be kicking off in about a week and a half. But that's not what we're out here for. We're out here for this. got a little situation here there's a pretty steep hill climb that's a little rutted out Ron is pulling his trailer and I uh, just can't get quite enough traction that trailer is pulling him back a little bit too much and he's on a he's on a Rubicon with 37 so it's not like he doesn't have the vehicle to do it um, we're gonna do I went up around this little side track here just to make sure that he could do it and I'm quite certain as long as we can back him up down there he'll be able to make it through that way. So we got Alex over here helping him out right now. 
While backing up to try and reroute to the easier go around, Ron's trailer began to slide off the trail. It was clear that we'd need to do a recovery pulling his vehicle about 20 yards to the top of the hill. We tried his winch at first, but it wouldn't turn on. We later discovered a loose wire to be the culprit. I had a longer kinetic rope, but it was buried deep in my camper, so we opted to try the shorter tow rope, tow rope first. The loose desert dirt disagreed with our tactics, so we reverted back to the much longer kinetic rope, which would enable the ram to get some much needed momentum and traction. Let's see how it turns out. After a small delay and a successful recovery, we decided to end the day a bit earlier than originally anticipated. We headed down the mountain and set up camp at the island Microplaya. Joey brought a set of bocce balls and the flat playa surface made for perhaps one of the best playing surfaces one could ask for. We whittled away the daylight hours between rounds of bocce ball and cold beverages. We'd be greeted with an astounding sunset, a brilliant moonrise, and even with all of the moonlight, we were able to catch the Perseids meteor shower. Getting close to sunset here at the island micro playa. I don't think I have words for this. This is amazing. It's low 80s out right now. It's, it is just perfect. We're gonna set up the time lapse, show you guys what we're experiencing out here. Be sure to turn into part two of our Black Rock Desert Adventure, where we'll visit Soldier Meadows Hot Springs, High Rock Canyon, and the Massacre Rim Dark Sky Sanctuary, and more. We'll catch you out there next time.